Hello and welcome to this episode of the Grow VC Everyone Funding Startups podcast. Modern startups are doing a lot more with a lot less, and especially with the recent economic state, this has really been accentuated in the development. And today we're talking about all that. We're talking about incremental progress, we're talking about global things, we're talking about these topical characteristics that make startups the startups they are in today's environment. And I'm here with Eric Ries, creator of and strong advocate for the Lean Startup methodology, as well as Valta from Grow VC. And let's start off with you, Eric. Would you give a short introduction to who you are and some background on yourself? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, thanks very much for having me. I, I grew up programming computers, so I've been in the technology business practically my whole life. And in the dot-com bubble, I got bit with the entrepreneurial bug, and I started to, to build startups, most of which were total failures, uh, some of the more recent of which have been more successful. And when I, through the process of building companies, I used to believe that I could build a great company just by building a great technology. Uh, and anyone who's actually tried that will know the answer, which is that that doesn't work out very well because there's a lot more to a startup than just technology. And then I used to think that if I just built a great team, a great team would build a great product and that would be the way to make a great company. And although uh, having a top talented team is very important, uh, what I discovered to my chagrin is that's not sufficient either. And what I had to learn the hard way was that the process by which you build a company matters just as much as the team, just as much as the idea, just as much as the product. And so I started to write about that experience. Um, created this thing you mentioned called the Lean Startup and have been uh, evangelizing that around the world uh, these past few years. And I thought since Grow VC has very much been built with efficiency close in mind and we're big believers in the Lean Startup methodology, especially given its relevance in today's landscape, to get Valto's hands dirty in this podcast, why don't you, Valto, start off the discussion by shooting a question at Eric? Sure. So um, maybe the first first thing that uh, comes to my mind is 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 there a, a limit on how lean a startup can be? Well, it's like asking uh, how lean can a person be. You know, leanness is really about efficiency, and so you can always be getting more and more efficient. It doesn't actually mean necessarily low cost or you know or low burn. So if you think about you know a, a marathon runner or a Lance Armstrong, a person who's very lean still burns an incredibly large number of calories. They just do it in a much more efficient way than you or me uh, sitting on the couch. And that's the right analogy to think about in terms of lean startups. Uh, it's really about figuring out what is it that startups can use money for, and more importantly, what can they avoid spending money on. And when we actually take that analysis, what we discover is that a lot of the work that most startups do is actually a complete and total waste. So for example... Most of the energy that entrepreneurs naturally fixate on, and, and I was no exception when I was an entrepreneur, they focus on building a good product, on having the product come out according to discrete milestones to make sure they're making progress on a regular basis, that they release the product on time, they have a big successful launch. But then it turns out that most, uh, and this is an insight I, I owe to Steve Blank, most products fail because they don't get any customers. They're fundamentally building the wrong thing, not because the technology doesn't work. So my question is, if we're building something that fundamentally nobody wants, why do we focus so much on doing it on time, on budget? See, if we're building the wrong thing, then all the energy we put into building it is actually a form of waste, even though it feels like progress in the moment. Uh, and so what we try to do with the Lean Startup mindset is try to ask ourselves, what activities actually are value creating? And then how can we emphasize those and eliminate the rest? And in being lean and efficiency in mind, is it limited to cost, or can you be efficient in, in different dimensions or different ways as well? Well, once you understand what, what constitutes progress, what actually is valuable for a startup, then there are actually situations where it makes sense to spend more money, not less money. Uh, in the very beginning, it tends to be more on the less money side and later on the larger money. But, so it's a little bit different than the traditional staging of investments. Uh, let me put it this way. I believe that the, that the thing that a startup exists to do is to learn what its business is going to be. So learning is the unit of progress, not the making of stuff. 
And in traditional lean manufacturing, lean startup takes its inspiration from lean manufacturing. Uh, the big question was learning to tell the difference between value and waste. But actually, understanding value is relatively easy. Whatever the customer values, we value. And so when we make things that the customer wants, then that constitutes progress. Except that in a startup, we often don't know who the customer is. So how can you kind of say that value is in the eye of the customer if we're not sure which customer we should serve? And that's just a little example where in a startup, anything we do which helps us understand who the customer is, is value creating. And actually building stuff for a hypothetical customer could easily be a kind of waste. So you could say, well, like I once had a, a startup pitch me. Uh, they were very proud of themselves. They thought they were very lean. And they said that they had managed to, they'd been developing this product for uh, almost two years and they'd managed to spend very, very little money, only a few thousand dollars because they'd gotten all different people to volunteer and they hadn't been spending a lot of money on the development or marketing or engineering. But over the course of the two years, because they had done it so cheap, they hadn't had any time, so they thought, to show the product to any customers. In fact, they hadn't spoken to a single customer over the course of two years. That's a case where by saving money, they actually caused themselves to go out of business more slowly. They would have been much better served to have spent a little bit more money and actually had customers involved in the process you know, much, much earlier. And Valto, when you've advised startups on their way and seen your, your large share of different entrepreneurs, what do you think their take is on, on lean startup methodology or basically the, the whole premise of being efficient nowadays? Is it something that is natural? Well, I, I see basically two, two different worlds. The other ones get it and the other ones don't get it. They live on the, on the old world, I would say, where, where it's, it's, uh, also it depends on from, kind of from what market or what, from what uh, country they come from. But in, in general, the old way of, of building a business obviously comes from this uh, heavy planning and, and big aim for big lump sum of money to be able to start at, at all. And then there's the younger generation, which is obviously have reached the same material online as, as many of the startup people do that immediately understands and it, it actually makes naturally it makes more sense because the other other path is more difficult for them. It's it's uh, for new entrepreneurs particular that they don't have any perspective to begin with when they start to kind of look at the, these methods of building startup. It makes more sense because it is more hands-on, it's more practical, it, it's more logical than this, this other, I would say for them, that what, what I consider traditional way is more mystical because it includes uh, bigger patterns and, and bigger time spans that are unknown. So I, I see both sides, but um, obviously I, I, I believe heavily on just getting things done and I actually think that in some places, uh, you can get funding a bit too easily for, for not very validated ideas. And, and typically, that tends to be public funding in some places. And I think that, is, is, that can be even counterproductive. It can be harmful because uh, creative, creativity and problem solving comes from real pro problems. And if you have too much money, you don't tend to have problems. So you make, make up problems that... You think solving those takes you forward, Eric? What, what's your take on that? Do you, do you believe that that if you have too much money, you won't focus on the real problems or the real issues? Uh, absolutely, too much money is just as dangerous as not enough money. Uh, and it's you know entrepreneurs who have never raised a large amount of money find this really hard to believe. But if you look at what happens when entrepreneurs raise a lot of money. Uh, a friend of mine, Mike Maples, who's an angel investor here in Silicon Valley, has a saying which is something like, no matter how much money you raise, you always seem to need more money in about 18 months. Uh, and that's true whether you raise $500,000, $5 million, or $50 million. Uh, because generally, we raise money to execute a certain plan. And it's like a law of human nature. We always feel like there are opportunities to accelerate that plan you know, in the short term. And so we always wind up taking them. And actually, if you think about it from the investor's point of view, if you actually plan, if you raise enough money to last you five or ten years, you know, a very long time, then why did you raise so much money? Uh, because it doesn't make sense. Most of the time you're operating, this money is just sitting in a bank doing nothing. 
So investors don't like to invest uh, in companies where the money's 